Good afternoon, mga mahal, my fellow gods, beloved. It's a beautiful Thursday morning, and uh, it was raining earlier on. And uh, come join me for my late breakfast, and uh, I made pandan kaya and purple sweet potato. So that's my homemade jam and uh, I want to tell you a story about testimony <laughs> I was thinking I wonder if there is digestive small digestive because I saw this thin Danish tin biscuit for just one dollar <laughs> and it's a tiny one you see but then I was thinking, I wonder if there is a digestive uh, small ones. And so look at that. Two. Two digestive small ones. <laughs> Grandpa brought this from church. Wow. So it, it, it is so amazing how God's work. So miracle and wonder is even just uh, tiny ones that we want. Isn't it? How much more for big ones, right? Amen. Come, let's read about what God has for us today, September 22, Thursday, 2020. It says here that there are times when the only thing we can do is the best thing to do, cry out to God. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Cry out to God. Um, it says here that in Psalm 24, uh, 34, Verse 6, it says that the poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. Wow. So it is so important that even if little things God answer and hear our prayers, just like this <laughs> digestive biscuits, look at that too. <laughs> and uh, let's read again this one. It says there that... Unless we form the habit of going to the Bible in bright moments as, much, as well as in trouble, we cannot fully respond to its consolations because we lack equilibrium between light and darkness. By Helen Keller, uh, she is a beautiful woman of faith and of God. And you can read more about her because uh, well, the powerful about the vision also which, which she has said is so powerful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And before we have this <laughs> uh, late breakfast, let's go and read God's word. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God. Thank you, Lord. And also, look at these beautiful flowers. Actually, this is not real flower. This is purple and green with green on it. And... Uh, as it's a sunflower <laughs> but my sweet potato is already at my little garden so i have these flowers with me now cactus beautiful cactus uh purple and green and look at these plants as well this is purple plants and green plants as well and uh, look at this cactus there's another color of that but i only have this one first and next time i can buy the other two yellow and red color and uh, hallelujah come let's partake the bread and the cup father god as we partake the bread and the cup we remember you we do this lord in remembrance of you for you did on the cross for us hallelujah jesus you are the bread of life amen the lord jesus says that um, take this take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood hallelujah this cup and do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death, death till he comes. Amen. Thank you, Father. We proclaim the Lord's death till you come. Come, let's tell he come. He's coming again. So we always, always have to be prepared and be ready because the Lord Jesus is coming again. But that's what he, he promised to us. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this bread and the cup. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Aleluya. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we come to you again also, Lord, for our protection, cover us with your precious blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus, oh God, that you are with us, in us, through us. Thank you also, Lord, for our president, and um, also bless our country, Lord Jesus, oh God. It says here that, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own inheritance amen thank you lord bless our country our nation our president our vice president bless also this country singapore father god lord bless this nation and the prime minister oh father god lord and all the governing officials hallelujah bless all the nation singapore father god jesus malaysia <laughs> usa hallelujah australia yes father god usa and the Philippines bless our country father God Lord bless our uh, the head of our country Lord vice president and the president and also the governing officials father God Lord bless our our family beloved spiritual family relatives and friends Lord as we and my beloved and I and this is our beloved family Lord Jesus oh God as we pray Lord Jesus oh God together hallelujah yes as we who dwells in the secret place of the most high we shall abide under the shadow of the almighty yes lord our loved ones our family relatives and friends employers spiritual family oh god lord people whom we are praying for that they will come to receive you and accept you lord as the personal lord and savior and protect us every one of us father thank you hallelujah we will say of the lord he is our refuge and our fortress our god in whom we will trust surely hallelujah he shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the peerless pestilence they shall cover us with his feathers and under his wings we shall take refuge his shoes shall be our shield and buckler we will not be afraid of the tail by night nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday a thousand may fall at our side and ten thousand at the right hand but it shall not come near us only with our eyes shall we look and see the reward of the wicked because they have made the lord, we have made the lord is our refuge even the most high our dwelling place no evil shall be for us nor shall any plague come near our dwelling for he shall give his angels to charge over us amen and keep us in all our ways hallelujah in their hands they shall bear us up lest we dash our foot against a stone we shall tread upon the lion and the cobra the young lion and the serpent we shall trample under our foot amen because the lord is saying that because they have set their love upon me therefore i will deliver them i will set them on high because they have known my name they shall call upon me and i will answer them i will be with them in trouble i will deliver them and honor them with long life i will satisfy them and show them my salvation amen and amen thank you father we praise you lord and we glorify you oh god oh yes thank you lord for your love and faithfulness and it's good to give thanks unto the lord for his good and his love endureth forever amen and amen thank you father we praise the lord and we glorify you oh god you're so good lord you're so wonderful you're so awesome yes lord you're the first and the last the beginning and the end the alpha and the omega hallelujah he was the first oh yes he was the last hallelujah he was dead but he came to life he knows our wrecks. Let's be in faithful. He knows our poverty. We should endure. He knows our tribulation. We should not fear. For no servant is greater than his master. Oh yes, thank you, Father. He who has an ear, let him hear. Who has an ear? Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes his eternal life, and he who is faithful, receives the crown of life. Yes, Father, as you are faithful to your Lord, yes, we will receive the crown of life, the crown, the incorruptible crown, the crown of rejoicing. The crown of life hallelujah oh thank you lord we praise the lord and we glorify you oh god thank you lord for this wonderful day amen and amen hallelujah come on let's continue on reading now god's word in the book 
of judges about Gideon. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. As we read your word, help us to understand. Give us, Lord, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your precious Holy Spirit. You are our teacher. Teach us and help us and guide us. In Jesus' mighty name, in the name of the full names we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Amen. About Gideon. Come, let's read. Most of us want to know God's plan for our lives, but we're not always sure how to find it. One common misunderstanding is the idea that God's guidance will come to us out of the blue. That is, that it has nothing to do with what we're doing now. But if we're always looking around for God's next assignment, we run the risk of ruining whatever we're working on right now. Fortunately, the Bible points to a kind of guidance that does not put out put our current projects in jeopardy. In the Bible's description of how God guided many people, we can see that Often, God's call came while people were completely immersed in the challenge of the moment. A good example of this kind of guidance is seen in Gideon's life. Gideon had a, li has had a limited vision, but he was committed to it. His challenge was to obtain food for his family, even though hostile invaders were making the growing, gathering, and preparation of the food almost impossible. Gideon was resourceful. He puts a wine press to double duty by turning it into a sunken threshing, threshing floor. It lacked ventilation to blow the chef away, but at least it was hidden from the Midianites. Gideon was working in his threshing floor when God sent him a messenger with a challenge. Gideon was surprised by God, by what God told him to do. He did not want to jump into a task for which he has ill prepared. The angel had to overcome three objections before Gideon was convinced. First, Gideon's feelings of responsibility for his family's welfare, and the second, his doubts about the call itself, and the third, his feelings of inadequacy for the job. Once Gideon was convinced, however, he obeyed with zest, resourcefulness, and speed. He dedicated those personality traits, traits to God with whom he was now personally acquainted. Gideon had his weak moments and failures, but he was still God's servant. If you can easily see yourself in the Gideon's weakness, can you also see yourself in being willing to serve? Remember, Gideon, as a man of obey, who obeyed God by giving his attention to the task at hand, then give your full attention to believing God will prepare you for tomorrow when it comes. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Strength and Accomplishments Israel's fifth judge a military strategist who was expert in at surprise, a member at the Hall of Faith in Hebrews 11, defeated by the Midianite army, was offered a hereditary kinship by the men of Israel, though slow to be convinced, acted on his convictions. Mm. Weaknesses and mistakes. Feared that see that his own limitations would pre would prevent God from working, collected Midianite gold and made a symbol that became an evil object of worship. Though a, a concubine father and son who would bring great grief and tragedy to both Gideon's family and the nation of Israel, failed to establish the nation in God's ways. After he died, they all went back to idol worship. Lessons from his life. God calls in the middle of our present obedience. As we are faithful, he gives us more responsibility. God expands and uses the abilities he has already built into us. God uses us in spite of our limitations and failures. Even those who make great spiritual progress can easily fall into sin if they don't consistently follow God. Mm -hmm, indeed.
Vital statistics were opera, valley of Israel, spring of Herod, occupations, farmer, warrior, and judge, relatives, father, Joash, son, Abimelech, and contemporaries, Ziba and Zalmona. Key verses. But Lord, Gideon asked, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in the Manasseh, and I am the least of my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites together. This is in Judges chapter 6, verse 15 to 16 and 16. And his story is also told in Judges chapter 6 to 8. He is also mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Come, let's go and read some more of other. Oh, this is Abimelech. Let's read about Abimelech. And uh, people who desire power always outnumber those who are able to use power wisely once they have it. Perhaps this is because power has a way of taking over and controlling the, the person using it. This is especially true in case of inherit, inherited but unmerited power. Abimelech's life shows us what happens when hunger for power corrupts judgment. Abimelech's position in Gideon's family as the son of a concubine must have created great tension between him and Gideon's many other sons. One against seventy. Such odds can either cross a person to make it with ruthless. It is obvious which, which direction Abimelech chose. Gideon's position as warrior and judge had placed Abimelech in an environment of power. Gideon's death provided an opportunity for the for the son to seize power. Once the process began, the disastrous results were inevitable. A person's thirst for power is not satisfied when he gets power. It's, it only becomes more intense. Abimelech's, Abimelech's life was consumed by that, thirst, by that thirst. Eventually, he could not tolerate any threat to his power. By this time, ownership had changed. Abimelech no longer had power. Power had, power had him. One lesson we can learn from his life is that our goals controlled by actions, by our actions. The amount of control is related to the importance of the goal. Abimelech's most important goal was to have power. His lust was for power led him to wipe out not only his brothers but also whole cities that refused to submit to him. Nothing but death could stop his bloodthirsty driving to conquer. How ironic that he was fatally enjoyed by a woman. The contrast between Abimelech and the great power in the Bible is great. We, he wanted to control the nation. They were willing to be controlled by God. He wanted to control the nations that were willing to be controlled by God. Mm -hmm. His strengths and accomplishments. First self-declared king of Israel, qualified tactical planner and organizer, weaknesses and mistakes, power hungry and ruthless, overconfident, took advantage of his father's position without imitating his character, had 69 of his 70 half-brothers killed. Vital statistics were Sichem, Ar Aruma, Thibis, occupation, self acclaimed king, judge, political troublemaker, relatives, father is Gideon, only surviving brother, uh, Jotham. Key verses Trust God repaid the wickedness that Abimelech had done to his father by murdering his 70 brothers. God also made the men of Sichem pay for all the wickedness. The curse of Josam, son of Jerobab, came on them. Judges chapter 9, verse 56 and, 56 and 57. His story is told in the Judges chapter 8, verse 31 to 9, 57. He also mentioned in first Second Samuel chapter 11, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Wow. Father God, thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you that we learn something from these two persons here, with Abimelech and also Gideon, his father. Abimelech, his son. Father God, as 